Next, from Chicago, Illinois' Director of Public Health is joined by First Lady Diana Rauner as they hold a press conference to release Illinois' first maternal and morbidity report. The report looked at the health care of women within the first year of pregnancy and found that on average, 73 Illinois women die each year. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nirav Shah, and I'm the director of the Illinois Department of Public Health. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us here today for this release of the first ever Illinois Maternal Morbidity and Mortality Report. I'm especially thankful for the invited guests and speakers who have made time today to join us to discuss this very important issue. Maternal morbidity and mortality matter. We consider them sentinel events that expose critical issues in the way that the healthcare system cares for, or in many instances, fails to care for women. Our goal is to understand what drives maternal mortality so that we can better understand the health of reproductive age women across Illinois. What we've seen through our work is that by addressing maternal mortality, we are presented with an opportunity to identify, treat, and improve women's health care overall. And that one of the key ways to prevent maternal mortality is to improve the health of all women and help them enter pregnancy at their healthiest. Simply put, maternal health is women's health. And if we can improve the health of moms, we can improve the health of all women. We in Illinois, a few years ago, decided to understand this issue with greater precision and shed light on the problem. In the past three years, we have expanded both the depth and the breadth of our work. Among many initiatives was the creation of the Maternal Mortality Review Committee specifically for violent deaths, which we created in 2015, and whose work is reflected in the report that we are releasing today. Overall, today's report is the result of several years of work and a refocusing on the issue of maternal morbidity and mortality across the state. The findings are stark and speak volumes. An average of 73 women died within one year of pregnancy each year since 2008. The disparities are even more alarming. Non-Hispanic African-American women are six times more likely to die of pregnancy-related conditions than non-Hispanic white women, six times. Hispanic women are twice as likely to die of pregnancy-related conditions as compared to non-Hispanic Caucasian women. Most concerning to me is the committee's finding that 72% of pregnancy-related deaths and a stunning 93% of violent deaths were deemed preventable. Let that sink in for a moment. Nearly three quarters of all deaths that were related to pregnancy were, pregnant, were, were preventable, and nearly all of the deaths related to violent death were preventable. That strikes us as public health professionals because in public health we say that what we can predict, we can ultimately prevent. That in order to get to sound policy that opens the door toward prevention, we have to understand the factors that predispose certain women toward dying. The factors that predict which women will die. It is only then that we'll be able to ultimately prevent those deaths. Today's report not only contains the data on who is at risk and why, but it also importantly contains a set of recommendations that set the groundwork for a plan of action to continue moving forward toward positive impact. I am so proud of the work that we've done here. I'm so proud that we are in Illinois prioritizing this issue and leading um, the best science to um, to, to review and understand and improve the health of all women. As president of the Ounce of Prevention Fund, um, we focus on the 
developing uh, bonds between mothers and children. And our goal is for all expectant mothers and their families to have access to the best quality prenatal and perinatal care at the earliest possible point in their pregnancy and to ensure that all families have access to, the healthy, to healthy pregnancies. Um, we are particularly happy that one of the most, one of the recommendations out of the review commission is to um, prioritize home visiting for families and particularly universal home visiting. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with home visiting, it is a voluntary program that brings, um, ta uh, brings ex experts and um, nurses to the home in the periods postpartum in order to provide support and services for families in all ranges of their children's, um, th of, of becoming a new parent. And uh, for those of you who have been a new parent, um, as I have, you recognize the absolute terror <laughs> that you feel when you bring a child home. And most of us are lucky to have uh, friends and family who can help us out. I was fortunate to have a sister who was a doctor, and that was a good thing because uh, my baby was not in great shape, um, and neither was I. But, uh, but not everyone has access to those kinds of supports. And one of the things that we have focused on, particularly in this state over many, many years, is a robust system of home visiting and prenatal supports, including community-based doulas. These are essential, essential supports, and we're so grateful that the, um, that the commission has, has uh, suggested expanding those, those efforts. As Dr. Shaw mentioned, one of the best ways that we can reach most all families is by, by, uh, by putting in place a system of universal home visiting. In our state, we call that Illinois Family Connects, and we have, become, be, we have been able to begin piloting this program with support from um, HRSA's, from, from the Maternal Infant Early Childhood Home Visiting Program, as well as the Governor's Office and um, the State Board of Education. Um, this is work that's really um, come out of some of the best practices across the country, and really prioritizing the opportunity for nurses to offer home visits to every family at, uh, at, at delivery at the hospital. As, um, as, as, uh, as Dr. Adams mentioned, one of the greatest killers is stigma. One of the things that we know is that the best way for us to, uh, to reach the most at-risk fam at families is to ensure that they feel no stigma, no judgment in being offered services. The wonderful thing about Illinois Family Connects is that it is offered and available to all families on the same terms. That really makes a difference, we've found, in terms of uptake of services and the reach of the program. In the Illinois Family Connects program, a nurse comes to visit the home within three weeks post-pregnancy, postpartum. As we know, that's sooner than families get, than, than women get to their doctor for their six-week checkup. And what we found is that this program is extremely, extremely popular. It's taken up by the vast majority, over 85% of families. And almost every family needs some kind of support. We've also found in our pilots of this program in this state that it has, in fact, found some very uh, life-threatening conditions in the, on the part of both mothers and babies in those first visits and has made it possible for those families to get the services and supports they need right away. We know in the long run that this is a, a program that can support the well-being of parents, of mothers, as well as babies, and can actually serve as a great support to, our st to prevent um, costs and, um, and tragedies in our state. So we have um, a challenge to the state. We'd like to make this state, Illinois, a state where every baby and new mother receives a home visit within three weeks of, of, their, of giving birth. That's a doable, actually, a doable uh, achievement, and it's one that we hope the state will continue to pursue in the years to come. Thank you again for having me here. I'd like next to invite Emily Gibellina up to the podium. Uh, Emily is perhaps a familiar face to many of you here at UIC. Uh, Emily is the Director of Government Relations for UI Health and previously served in several roles as an attorney in state government. Today, however, she joins us in a different capacity. In her role as a mother of two boys 
as well as a mother who has experienced maternal health complications herself. And in the haze of having a newborn and sleepless nights, I figured, oh, this is normal, no big deal. Um, but luckily for me, I had a family member who recognized that, in fact, these were not normal postpartum symptoms and rushed me to the emergency room. And after undergoing a battery of tests in the emergency room, I'll never forget the ER physician who looked at me and said, what you're experiencing is heart failure. And I looked at him and said, no, 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 no. I'm not experiencing heart failure. I have a five-day-old at home. I have to go home and take care of him. But I was definitely in heart failure, and I was also dangerously close to having a, C uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a seizure due to my skyrocketing blood pressure. So over the course of the next several days, I underwent various procedures to address not only the heart failure and the blood pressure, which was caused by postpartum preeclampsia, but also procedures to remove the fluid that had accumulated around my heart and lungs, as well as two separate blood transfusions as a result of all the blood I lost during the C-section. But even after undergoing all of that, I was scared, I was worried I wouldn't see my son again. I was also very lucky. I was lucky that I had family members who advocated for me and who recognized that what I was experiencing was not normal. And I was also lucky that I had healthcare providers who recognized my symptoms and acted very quickly. As you've heard today, there's a lot of women in the United States that are not so lucky, particularly in underserved and minority populations. And so since that time, I've watched that newborn baby grow into a very energetic five-year-old, and I gave birth to my other son without any sort of complications. And that is why the work of that's why these recommendations and the work of IDPH and the Maternal Mortality Review Committee is so important, because every mother should get the chance to watch their children grow up. And we must do better for all of our moms and babies. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think, I think one of the things that this report indicates is where it needs to be expanded. For example, one of the findings of the report that uh, I found to be quite, quite telling was that as it relates to pregnancy-associated deaths, quite a few of those deaths, I believe nearly 60%, occur after 42 days postpartum. That's significant. It shows us that expanded, Medicare, expanded Medicaid coverage uh, just up until the first six weeks postpartum is not sufficient. That's a new finding from this report, and that's the kind of data that we need in order to craft proper policies. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us here today. Uh, and thank you for joining us and, and, and taking part in this event. We hope that these recommendations will be carried forward. Please, everyone, have a safe afternoon. Thank you.